Following the fan outcry that accompanied the cancellation of Freelance Police, Sam and Max found themselves indefinitely shelved from the public eye, and with their contractual obligations to LucasArts fulfilled, the dog and rabbit duo were without a home for the first time in years. I had a contract with LucasArts, a licensing contract for the um, for Freelance Police, and when that expired I was able to talk to other companies about you know, doing a new project because I always make sure if somebody's not going to do something with my characters that the rights will come back so I'll have another shot at it and uh, and so I went out and, and uh, had a lunch with Dan and Kevin at, at uh, this Bavarian uh, sushi place over in uh, Emeryville and they pitched me on the idea of doing an episodic series and I was totally won over. The way we see it is it allows for um, the player to experience the game over a six month period or a five month period depending on the release schedule and they can enjoy it in, in a different chunk of content um, so they can stay engaged and, and continue to participate with it like they would their a, a favorite television show or, or other forms of entertainment. For the first couple seasons um, usually the, the process would be we'd go out for a couple of uh, kind of dinners where we would sort out you know, broad beats of stories and just talk broadly about what kinds of things we wanted to see in a season and, and just try to crack each other up and, and uh, think of a lot of, a lot of random ideas that we could find ways to pull together into something more cohesive or as cohesive as a Sam and Max thing needs to be. So, so those are fun kind of brainstorming sessions and then along the way they would kind of keep me, keep me apprised of what was going on. And, and if I had a chance, I would contribute character designs or things like that. But usually the process was for me to be more involved early on. Part of the appeal of Sam and Max is you can pretty much drop them in anywhere. The fun is seeing how they react to stuff instead of um, whatever situation you can put them in. So it's not like it's hard to find weird things for Sam and Max to do. I think the bigger challenge was taking graphic adventure games, which had traditionally been such a niche market, and finding a way to streamline it for more casual audiences. We set out to build the company. That was something we, we really were going for, is if by episode three we could have people saying, when's, when's four going to be here, when's five going to be here, um, then it would be a success because we'd be creating that feeling of anticipation versus that feeling of exhaustion. You know, when I finish a, a, a full product, a 20-hour game or a 40-hour game or even a 12-hour game, it's almost like, thank God it's done. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rest for a while. Whereas with the episodic stuff, it's kind of getting doled out and you're engaged for a long time. First episode goes out for a series and, you know, people are all complaining about X, Y, and Z. Maybe we can get X fixed by the time episode two comes out. We can definitely get Y and Z fixed by the time the third episode is out. So the games get better. I never had any issues with the idea of an episodic release. I always thought it was a great format for Sam and Max since a lot of the stories that I used to do with them you know, we're in a, you know, a few pages, and so I think the, the style fits them really well because it allows you to, to kind of jump around. You can have an overarching theme, but then you can jump around and kind of try these different themes within that, which I like a lot and think it's perfect for the characters. They've done, a, they've done an amazing job in the first two seasons, both building up, you know, the whole concept of episodic gaming in general and maintaining, you know, the voices of the characters, um, you know. I, 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 I'd like to think Steve's happy with what we've been doing.